Thank you, Pierre. Uh, good afternoon. The Commission has today adopted one of the most important components of its political priorities for 2006. As you know, security is one of the most important concerns to our citizens. Our citizens want the European Union to be more effective, in particular in the fight against terrorism and organized crime, but also in the management of migration flows and in the control of external borders. Freedom, security, and justice are at the heart of the Commission reform agenda. In the first 18 months of this Commission, over 17 percent of all Commission proposals cover the area of justice, liberty, and security. This is a key feature of our Europe of Results agenda. Ten years ago, the Treaty of Amsterdam created the legal framework for increased European cooperation on these issues. The Finnish presidency in 1999 gave the political impetus to this work through the adoption of the Tampere Action Plan. And this was further developed in the Hague program adopted in November 2004. We have now come full circle as we return to Tampere for the informal Justice and Home Affairs Council on the 20th September. So from Tampere to Tampere, we believe some progress is needed. And today, the Commission has delivered its contribution by adopting four documents. First, a political assessment of progress made in recent years with identification of the areas where new impetus is required and of the way forward on policy development and decision making. Second, a stock of the progress made and assessment of the level of implementation at European Union and national level. Third, a, future, a mechanism for the future evaluation of results in this area. And fourth, a concrete proposal aiming at providing more effective judicial cooperation. Vice President Frattini will outline the papers in more detail and specifically focus on the development of the policy agenda. By way of introduction, I want to make three points. Firstly, more needs to be done on implementation of what already exists. We have looked at non-compliance and failure to communicate national measures. We have a striking lack of transposition by some member states in areas of police and criminal justice. While all agree to the need for effective action to fight terrorism and organized crime, the effective transposition of key legislation, like the framework decision on terrorism, remains lacking in a number of member states. At the same time, we should give credit where it's due. Let me tell you that the new member states are leading the way and countries like Poland and Slovakia should be complimented on the commitment they are showing. Secondly, 10 years on from the Treaty of Amsterdam, decision-making remains slow and cumbersome. We are not using the existing treaties to their full potential. On the 10th of May, in our paper on the future of Europe, we called for the bridging clauses in the existing treaties to be used to improve the functioning of decision-making. The European Council has broadly endorsed this call and asked the Finnish presidency and the Commission to take this work forward. In this package of papers, we set out our rationale in greater detail on why we believe the community method should be applied to police and judicial cooperation in criminal matters and legal migration. We are aware of the political sensitivities and the specific situation of certain countries, but we believe that 10 years after establishing the legal framework, we cannot continue to justify the lack of accountability and use of unanimity. So this point is important. We are basing our proposals on a very concrete and pragmatic anal analysis of what should be improved. And now we have, 10 years after, 
now we have concrete evidence of the sectors where specifically we can improve our decision making. And there is no reason, I believe, for delaying decisions in this matter. If they are good, why waiting some years more to have them adopted? That's why we are therefore proposing to use the possibility in Article 42 of the Treaty of the European Union and Article 77, Paragraph 2 of the Treaty of the European Communities of the existing treaties to make this change. The Commission is opening the interinstitutional debate and based on the results of this debate, we will pre present the formal proposals. This should not be seen as the anticipation or selection of parts of the constitutional treaty. It should be seen as the possible way to improve the way decisions are taken at European level in the area of freedom, security and justice using the existing treaties. In fact, as you know, in the last European Council there was a debate about this and the conclusion, generally speaking, was not to anticipate the constitutional treaty, but precisely to make the most of the existing treaties. And where there is a possibility to improve our methods of working based on the existing treaties, why shouldn't we do it? Why should we be waiting for some time in the future and not deliver precisely on the uh, expectations of our citizens that want, by the way, all data confirms that our citizens want a more effective action at European level in matters of justice and uh, security. Thirdly, I would like to highlight our specific proposal to provide more effective judicial protection with further involvement of the Court of Justice. The EC Treaty, Article 68, currently restricts the jurisdiction of the Court of Justice to give preliminary rulings on legislation in asylum, asylum migra immigration, visas, cooperation in civil matters, and other policies related to the free movement of persons. The transitional period of this limitation ended, ended on the 1st May 2004. But the Council did not fulfill its legal obligations to review the situation. Today, we have proposed a draft Council decision to close this loophole in access to justice and remove what we consider a persisting anomaly. I would like now to hand over to Vice President Frattini to outline in more detail the policy agenda that we have adopted today. And let me tell you that I'm really very happy to have this opportunity today because this, I believe, is one of the most important areas of action where European Union makes sense, where a European dimension brings indeed value added to what member states can do at national level. Thank you. Mm.